Welcome to Champions Collective. We're excited to bring you next level access to your favorite football players with this upcoming interview. Be on the lookout for our Champions Collective NFTs that acts as an exclusive members only pass. In addition to this great content, members will have access to tailgates, watch parties, golf tournaments, meet and greets, exclusive merchandise, signed memorabilia, ticket packages, and much, much more. Stay tuned for more details coming soon. Now, let's get to our awesome show. Ladies and gents, welcome back once again. Champions Collective Podcast has another jam-packed show for all you football fans out there. If you're particularly a big fan of the Big Ten, this is your show. I am B Mac Brian McFadden. I'm joined by outstanding Maryland sophomore tight end CJ Dupree. Before we get into the conversation, make sure you follow my guy on Twitter and Instagram, the same name, right? At CJ Dupree, D-I-P-P-R-E. Make sure you give him a follow. He probably will follow you guys back. But if you don't rock and roll with the Terra Prince, he might not show you any love, but he will make that decision. CJ, thank you for joining me here on Champions Collective Podcast, man. How you doing? How you feeling? I'm doing great, man. I'm excited for the opportunity. Thank you guys for bringing me on. Oh, no question. No question, man. You're a stand-up guy on and off the football field, and we want to make sure we showcase all your skill sets to our listeners and our viewers. But that being said, right now you're around, what, 6'5", 260. I guess you're bigger now than where you than what you were while you were in high school, but you played quarterback in high school. So tell us a little bit about your quarterback skills in high school and your size playing in Northeast Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was still like 6'5", 250 at the time. I played quarterback. So like there was a senior quarterback my freshman year that started. So I played a little bit of tight end and D end. And then mm-hmm. I stayed playing D end for four years. I started and then my sophomore and junior year I played quarterback my senior year I played a little quarterback and a little bit of tight end because I was already committed to Maryland at the time to play tight end and obviously I want to get more experience I showed up so uh I mean quarterback was the spot obviously everyone wants to be the quarterback there's only one of them on the team you know you're obvious vocal leader you're a team leader usually so uh it was awesome I like the experience it definitely helped me transition to a tight end by being able to like see defensive coverages you know like know the personnel and just like the playbook came to me a lot easier because I understand, understood the concepts. So with your skill set being a former quarterback, when will we get a chance to see you throw a pass for Listen, Maryland? I know they, I'm pretty sure they got a tight end throwback or something like that. That's above my pay grade, above my level of knowledge. I mean, I would love to, and I've always said I would love the opportunity to. We set mm-hmm. one up in the spring game, but I got tackled before I got to throw it. But uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know when that's going to come in. I guess whenever we need it. I don't think I don't think we've played a team that we're like desperate to run a trick play yet. I mean, we're kind of just, you know, get the ball to our great running backs behind our good line, you know, pass yep. ball, quarterbacks, receivers, tight ends. So, I mean, that's kind of our motto right now. Well, we know the coaches were they were a big reason why you decided to attend Maryland. Well, why did you feel comfortable and excited about this coaching staff? Um, so again, I'm a big weight room guy. I've, I've always been, my dad was a power lifter way back in the day. So I always lifted with him and, you know, I kind of fell in love with the gym, like my sophomore year, but like when it got to the point where, you know, my dad didn't have to like make me go, or I didn't I feel like I urged the need to go. Like I wanted to go and was excited to go after school and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I kind of felt so coach RD, Ryan Davis, our, and our, our entire weight room staff. I mean, I met them all and, you know, I knew he was our guy, obviously, all great, all great athletes, all great NFL players. I mean, no one is going to be great without the weight room, no matter if that's receiver, DB, you know, even kicker, you know, you need to do your certain like mobile movements, your certain like movements for to get stronger and what you need to get stronger. And I knew they'd be able to take me to that next level. Um, my Ted, my tight end coach, coach Miller, um, I sat down and had a great conversation with him and, uh, you know, I mean, he really drew me in as well. Um, I knew Mm -hmm. he'd be able to, you know, get me to the next level if that's a possibility for me. I mean, obviously right now doing pretty good for myself. So hopefully that is an opportunity to play on after college. But I know if there's one guy to get me there, it was definitely him out of my entire recruiting process. And Coach Locks, yep. when I came in before I was committed, I never got to meet Coach Locks or something going on. But uh, I mean, just hearing about him, asking players about him and like to, he stands up to what I'm saying now. I mean, he's a great guy and I love him as coach. Yeah. So you tally your first college reception against uh, one of your home state teams. That team was Penn State. And you made your first college start against Virginia Tech in the Penn Strike Bowl. So what was the most memorable moment of your freshman season? Um, To be honest, my most memorable moment, I mean, as weird as it is, it has to be like 
either like seeing my name on the travel squad, like seeing that, like, you know, I'm traveling as a freshman and everything. I mean, I kind of had a feeling I was, you know, I put great work in in the spring and in camp and stuff like that. And I was running with the ones and then, uh, you know, just traveling with the team. I mean, my first travel with the team was the second time I've ever been on a plane. So Mm -hmm. it was pretty cool. And just, I mean, I love football. I love it all, but like, I love traveling. I like playing away more than I like to play home. I love seeing the stadiums. I mean, again, this year I scored my first touchdown against Michigan. I mean, yep. roaring too. I mean, it was at the end of the game and all, but I mean, it still put us in a position to win if we got the onside kick. But uh, I mean, it was all great. Last year, like Penn State, like you mentioned, the catch, I had two catches, but I mean, it was already towards the end of the game. It was nice to get them against Penn State. I'm excited to play them again this year as a bigger mm-hmm. role. And yeah, that's, I mean, I started in the pinstripe board more, more so for Chick, Chig's injury at the time. But, uh, I mean, I obviously stepped up in that role and held my own, so that was awesome. Yeah. What has impressed you the most uh, about Talia Tungabailoa's development this season? Um, again, I think his confidence level skyrocketed from this year to la- from last year to this year. Um, I think he's just moving around way better, more comfortable with all our senior linemen coming back. I mean, we have a really good receiving course. So that, I mean, he shows great confidence in that. And uh, – He's definitely a vocal leader more than he was last year. You know, he comes in on a huddle, you know, high fives us all before all the plays, you know, and breaks down on the right stuff and knows what to do and what to say behind the line. Yeah. And talking about your quarterback, behind him is another electrifying talent at the running back position in Roman Hemby. Uh, tell us, uh, what, what has what's the most impressive run you've seen from Roman so far? Um, I'm going to have to go week one against Buffalo, his second touchdown, because – like the first touchdown I was in, like we sealed off the – me and the offensive lineman sealed off the side and you ran off and scored. That was the – I'm pretty sure that was our opening touchdown of the season, so that was awesome. And then the next one, when he bol- he bolted down the sideline, I mean, he was cruising. Like his legs were hitting the ground so fast. It was ridiculous. He's he's a great running back. We have, we have a whole room of great running backs, but, I mean, he definitely stands out. Yeah. What was the move coming out of that Michigan game – that you almost pulled out, you know, a huge upset victory on the road. And, oh, by the way, you were named Maryland's Offensive Player of the Week that week as well, right? Yes, sir, I was. I mean, at halftime of the game, again, I don't recollect what exactly the score was at halftime, but it was definitely close. And, mm-hmm. like, halftime and, like, we would we didn't even feel like we were losing the game. Like, we literally felt like we were winning the game. I mean, we were playing up to our standard, you know, playing and did, doing what we had to do. Um, I mean, we obviously had a couple of mistakes. We had a lot of opportunities to win that game. Um, I don't think we really walked into it as an upset look. I mean, I walked, we walked into it thinking, you know, we were going to win. Like we weren't walking mm-hmm. up there, anything like that as all, all college teams probably do. But, uh, I mean, after the game, um, it was obviously like we lost. So we, under, we understood that, you know, like it wasn't like, uh, you know, jerk around fast or anything like that. But, you know, I mean, there was, it wasn't like like this past week when we lost Purdue. I mean, obviously dead silent. Everyone, you know, because I mean that was a game we absolutely should have won. Dead silent, as you mm-hmm. would think. Just you know, everyone showing up. But the Michigan one, I mean, we stood toe to toe with them. Even though we felt like we should have won, I mean, we know we played to our standard. Even though we had a couple opportunities, but I mean, it was rough. But I mean, we got past it a lot easier than we, what it felt like after the game against Purdue. Yeah, and speaking of Purdue, how do you bounce back after a loss like that? You know, clearly the game was in you in you guys' hands. And unfortunately, you know, a bad call here or there led to Purdue, you know, prevailing. But how do you bounce back? Yeah, again, I mean, the big talk is, I mean, we really, all season you see, like, we don't get the best calls. We get some of the worst calls. But uh, mm-hmm. can't just put it on that. I mean, besides the, those flags that we've had in the pre- last previous games, especially Purdue, I mean, we had so many opportunities besides those plays. I mean, we shouldn't even have been in the position that we had to, I mean, obviously, you know, you see it goes off sides, but you shouldn't have missed an extra point. And then, you know, you have the whatever lineman downfield. We shouldn't even have been in the position to do that. We should have been up by a couple of scores. I mean, that stuff shouldn't even matter. It came to that point. But, uh, I mean, it was it, it was rough. Purdue's a good team. I mean, I mm-hmm. think they're better than what people think they are and where they're ranked and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, definitely should have been a winnable game for us. Well, what are the keys to a victory this week against Indiana? And which Maryland player – do you think is poised to have a breakout game? Um, I mean, the key this week is, you know, just doing what we do, get back, don't get bored with the basics, obviously. And, uh, you know, get to our stuff. Cause in Purdue, we made a lot of simple mistakes and, you know, even if it's just a yard off or, you know, running the wrong route, simple mistakes that we missed. And, uh, 
I think we just got to not overlook our opponent. I think Indiana is a great team. Their record doesn't show up. I mean, I think they're still a good team. Playing on the road in the Big Ten is always tough, too. But, uh, I mean, to have a great game, I think I think Talia is going to throw for a lot of yards. And I think our running back's going to run for a lot. Mm-hmm. So it should be half line, half line game entertainment wise from the offensive side. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it should be a very entertaining game from the offensive side. Our defense should hold up great. Again, I don't know mm-hmm. anything about offense. We don't watch their offense because we yeah. are defense. But uh, I mean, it looks like we can have a very explosive game. I can't get really into details with it, but no worry. You gave us enough. You yeah. gave us enough, so we know exactly what to look for. Uh, this Saturday. Before we let you go, CJ, we're going to transition to the two-minute part of our show. Two-minute drill is what I like to call it. I'm going to hit you with rapid-fire questions. We want your honest, unbiased answer. First question for you. Favorite school tradition is? Singing the Maryland fight song after games. Gotcha. All right. Rival school you dislike the most? Penn State, easily. Penn State. This next question, I think I know the answer. Favorite Maryland uniforms? Uh, it's got to be the throwback ones. Those the the Terps grip helmets. I mean, everything yep. was. I like the white jerseys more, but I mean, the red ones we wore this year were even pretty good. Yeah, I mean, everybody has said that. So, I, I, and I like it from afar as watching as a fan when you guys put that on, man. That that, that that's a nice set. That's a nice set. Uh, Go to pregame meal. Um. I'm not, I, I don't know on that one to be honest with you. I mean, we always have. I I usually eat the same food. The same thing. I just the do the same thing. You know, for me, if I had an early game, I would eat light anyway. I didn't eat a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it was like a high noon game, you eat breakfast right before you leave mm-hmm. to go to the stadium. I had a light, a light portion as well. Uh, but what about this one? Favorite food spot on campus? Probably the hall. That's right. Like right behind the hotel. It's a great spot to eat. Okay. Uh, best road environment in the Big Ten? Um, Ohio State. That I've been to so far. The shoe, the horseshoe. All right. Yeah. Last question for you. Who is the GOAT at your position? I'm going to have to go with Gronk on that one. There's a lot of great ones, but I'm going to have to go with Gronk. Now, re- like playing this year, um, Kelsey's going off, but I'm a big fan of Mark Andrews. I think he's oh, very yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's hey, he's right in your area, you know what I mean? Not far from you, so you get a chance to see him up and close and personal probably week in and week out because of uh, where you guys are located at. So, yeah, Mark Andrews is not a bad, is not a bad answer to that question, that, to that question. But, CJ, thank you for joining me here. Brian McFadden and Champions uh, Collective Podcast. Big game for Maryland. CJ and his teammates will be taking on Indiana. And, CJ, go ahead and, 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 and see if you can give us half of what Travis Kelsey gave us Monday night against the Raiders and get at least two touchdowns. Can you do that? Uh, man, opportunities come my way. I got you, man. It, no question. No question. Thank you, CJ, for joining us, man. Best of luck to you and your teammates this uh, this Saturday against Indiana. Get that victory. Yes, sir. Appreciate it.